Hi, I'm Matt Shade Tech. I'm a producer and DJ based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the senior logic instructor for DubSpot and for DubSpot Online. In this video, we're gonna look at creating a big stacked up sawtooth synth sound. You hear this in a lot of house music, trance, hip hop, and I'm gonna give you some little tips for making it sound nice and big and full. We're also gonna use a new feature in Logic Pro X, which is the track stacks functionality that they've added. And so I've created a little example piece here. I'll play it for you and then we'll get into the tutorial. Okay, so there's our example. Now, before we get into the body of the tutorial, there's an important tip here, which is you're not gonna be able to work with track stacks unless you have the advanced tools enabled. Those are gonna be under preferences, advanced tools, and then you're just gonna click show advanced tools, make sure that's turned on, and that's gonna enable track stacks for you. This is something they kind of added in X where they put some of the more advanced tools in a kind of a hidden under the hood place that you have to turn on. You may have noticed the first time you started X, it asks you about that. I recommend just to keep them on. It's gonna help you learn and we're gonna need them for this tutorial. Okay, so you can hear, this is the sound that we're gonna focus on. And we can see actually that this is currently in a track stack. So I'm actually using this track stack functionality for this sound and so, if we zoom in a little bit here, we can see we've got some different layers. Let's give this a little more real estate as well so we can see some names, there we go. So we've got a top, mid, and bottom layer to the sound. I'm just gonna take you through layer by layer and then we'll go through and recreate it. So here's the top layer. Then we've got the mid layer here. And then we've got the bottom layer here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate that and then we'll stack them all into a track stack. So I'm gonna start by going down here to the bottom and let's just create a new software instrument track. And we're gonna load on it an instance of, don't need the library right now, we're gonna load on it an instance of the ES2. Okay, now there's a preset that we're gonna use for this as our starting point, which actually gets us pretty close, which is under tutorial settings, analog saw unison. What this means is that with unison mode on, it's gonna stack up, in this case, 10 copies of the sound, and then the analog here is gonna detune them from each other and make them slightly different so that it gives us this thicker, richer sound. It's pretty similar to when you double vocals, when you do a live second take of a vocal track so that it's just a little different and it doubles in there and kind of fills out the texture. So what I'm gonna do is we'll just call this top two and I'm just gonna grab my top MIDI here and we'll solo it. Now, because of the way that this sound is designed, it's gonna start super low in pitch and I'll just turn the volume down quite a bit here. So what we need to do is let's just get the pitch manipulation aspect of the sound and that's the part that is causing it to go, give us that, that dive at the end of it. And so basically what I did in here was I've got pitch one, two, and three being controlled by envelope two so that it sustains at the high pitch and then when the note gets let go, it dives and I've got a release of 500 milliseconds. So let's just set that up real quick. So we're gonna go into the ES2. We're gonna choose pitch one, two, and three and envelope two. We're gonna set the sustain all the way up and we're gonna set the release to 500 milliseconds. We're going to make sure that the amount is turned up. And we're also gonna give this a little release of its own. Once we've got those settings in, let's also switch it to poly mode so that it can play the chords. So now whenever we let go of the note or stop it, 
It's going to give us that kind of funny dive on there, kind of like a tape stop effect. Okay, now that we've got that, so you can hear it's actually getting us pretty close. We're going to add the panning movement that I had in here. So I'm going to choose target pan and I'm going to use LFO2, which is the synced LFO. Let's set it to a square wave shape and I'm going to go for, I had a 16th note rate. And let's turn off this pitch here. So then once we've got our 16th note LFO rate dialed in, we're just going to turn up the amount of the panning till we hear what we like. We could go super far with it, but I think that somewhere down here is pretty nice, kind of gentle. It's giving us some nice rhythmic action, but not too drastic. So we're gonna start with that. That's gonna be our main sound inside of the synthesizer. What we're gonna to add to it so we're going to add some audio effects, which are going to widen it out a little bit further. So I'm going to go for the sample delay here, and I'm going to add, let's try 500, 400, something like that, 400 samples. Now, if you listen to this on speakers, you'll hear that it gets a kind of a wider sound, and that's because we're delaying just the left channel here. So it's coming out a little later, it's a little different, and it makes it feel like a little bit of a kind of a bigger, wider sound. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our reverb send here, just to crank that up quite a bit and wet up the sound. I'm sending this to a large hall preset on bus two. You can hear that's giving us a nice tail. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is just double click on the EQ slot here, and we're really gonna take the bottom off of this. That sounds pretty good to me, because keep in mind, this is gonna be on top of two other layers that are gonna be filling out the low frequencies. Okay, so that's good for that one. Now we're gonna create our next layer in our stack. So I'm gonna use new track with duplicate setting to make another copy of this same sound. I'm gonna drag my MIDI down, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Let's open up the ES2 and we're gonna turn off some of the stuff that we did. So we're, we're gonna turn off the panning. We're going to, we'll keep the pitch so that it's the same as the other one. And we're also gonna turn off the channel EQ here that's taking out the bass. We've got these nice little power buttons on the effects now. Something I like in uh, Logic Pro X. Okay, now it's getting there. We don't need the sample delay either. We'll turn that off. And we're also gonna turn the reverb down but it's still a little too bright. So let's jump back in the synth and I'm gonna take the cutoff here, filter cutoff too. And I'm gonna turn off this envelope too as well, which is currently controlling that. So although it doesn't sound super exciting on its own, what it's doing by taking it out of the reverb and taking out the stereo effects, it's putting it right down the middle, which is gonna give it a feeling of presence. And it's gonna give it that body that we need to reinforce the top, but that we don't want widened out across the whole stereo spectrum. So let's just try those two together real quick. Nice, okay. So now we're gonna make one more copy and this time it's gonna get even simpler. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna select all these notes, except for the bottom turn them off and in the synth I'm just going to jump in and we're just going to use one oscillator oscillator one and I'm going to use a saw wave and actually turn this to mono mode and I'm going to have less analog so less detuning and I think I'm going to take it down an octave here quite a bit darker. In fact, let's just take it right out of unison mode. There we go. Nice and simple, right? Doesn't sound so crazy on its own, but it's gonna really do its job in here. So there you have the basic sound. Now to kind of get this, and let's label these. This will be mid two. Bot 2. 
Okay, so now that we've got these labeled, let's get them into a track stack. So this is really easy. What we're gonna do is just right click on the track and we're gonna choose create track stack. Now it's gonna give us a choice. Do we want a folder stack or do we want a summing stack? In this case, we're gonna choose a summing stack because what that's gonna do is it's gonna put them all together in a single audio track that we can then apply effects to. That's how I achieved the filter sweep effect on all three tracks in the intro is by putting them into a summing stack and then automating an EQ on the output. So let's choose summing stack on the output. If we choose a folder stack, it's not going to affect the way they behave in the mixer. So it's just going to be more cosmetic, just kind of organizing them in the view, but they're not going to change their routing in the mixer. Whereas a summing stack, it's going to bust them all together in a submix. Now let's hit create on our summing stack. And then we can see here now, the graphic looks a little bit different. Um, and that's indicating that top two is inside this sum 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag mid two above top two, which is gonna add it to the stack and the same for bottom two. And then let's just, we'll just reorder these a little bit just so they make more sense. Put our mid in the middle. There we go, top, middle and bottom. Now we've got them all in a stack. We can collapse them if we want. We'll call this Big Saws 2. And now, there they are. So now that we've got these in a stack, I'm just gonna unsolo and solo the stack itself because now I can just listen to all three of those together in the stack. And over here now, you'll see that they've been assigned to bus five. So they're all together in bus five and we've got these this EQ and compressor ready to go. Let's turn the EQ on, open it up and we can turn on the low pass filter here. And apply some interesting effects. Now you hear my reverb is not currently in the stack. If I want it to be, all I need to do is jump into the mixer, just grab this large reverb here. Here's the input, which is bus two, and the output is currently going to the main output. I'm just gonna grab that and take it and route it through my bus five, I've just got a duplicate there, route it through the bus five, and now that reverb will get processed with the stack as well. So really what we're doing here is just kind of basic audio routing, creating submixes and processing those submixes, but this track stacks functionality gives us a nice easy way to do that. And now we can also, if we want to, if we enable our musical typing keyboard as they've renamed it, we can actually play the stack as a single instrument from a MIDI controller, which I think is really gonna be a lot of fun. If you're gonna create big pad parts or parts like this, uh, you can really start to get interesting with it and just have it all in one stack and play it that way. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for your own music. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about me and my music, you can check me out at mattshadetech.com. You can also check out my album, The Empire Never Ended, which is out now on iTunes. And if you'd like to learn more about Logic, you can check us out at dubspot.com, where we offer classes both at our school in New York City and online through Dubspot Online. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.